great leadership that we were able to do and we achieved. I just want to say that it's a wonderful spirit to see everybody together, to see everybody come together on this Friday, beautiful Friday morning uh, in solidarity and also in Daba to get together to meet each other and also to reminisce for the sake of Zimbabwe Jewry. Um, just a few people I'd like to mention. First of all, to Telfed for putting this together. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And there's so many former Rhodesians and Zimbabweans on the, on the executive. And they talk about they being elected. I'm worried how some of them got on. Maybe they're learning from back home. And I'm joking. It's purely democratic and we salute you. Um, also, I see Franklin and Lucy playing in the audience. I want to thank you for always, uh, when you were there, for your hospitality and the wonderful kosher safari food. Uh, it was always a privilege. Celia Abramson, the wife of the late Harold, good to see you and thanks for keeping in touch by email. Uh, naturally, Stolly Kaplinski got a mention. Uh, also, he's from the American Joint, the JDC, uh, who make a lot of um, our assistance to Zimbabwe jury possible. I want to say that it's a little bit difficult, uh, sorry, Ambassador Gershon Gunn as well, and our incoming ambassador. We look uh, forward to talking to you later, and to thanks for coming here. It's a little bit difficult to talk to you and address you about what's happening back home, what's happening in Zimbabwe, because you all have internet, you all have contacts there, you all have people there. How many of you just still have family or have connections back to Zimbabwe? So there you go. So you should tell me what's happening. Um, okay, so basically what I'll tell you is the activities that we undertake and um, also what I would like to achieve here today. So I'm going to talk about Harari first. We stepped in very actively, as you heard a number of years ago, when the, there were shortages on the shelves, there was nothing available in fact, and we stepped in with the assistance of the American Joint, as you heard, beneficiaries in South Africa, and we supplied food, basic necessities, to everybody. It didn't matter who they were, it didn't matter what fancy houses they had, how many cooks, etc. Everybody was able to come and collect because there was nothing on the shelves. We also sent for the housekeepers and people that worked for them. Uh, this went on for about uh, 18 months, two years, and as you know, things eventually improved, and now we just send envelopes of cash financially. We assist people on a monthly basis. We also distributed them masses of medication, which I used to, in most cases, bring by hand to uh, bring uh, by air, should I say, and then coming to customs, they used to see all these boxes, and a couple of bottles of Panada, got you through no questions, because it's a reality, it's not a bribe. These people needed it as well. They didn't have plasters, they didn't have uh, uh, nappy pins, whatever it was. This was a gift to them, and it worked. We still continue to distribute and supply 50 people with chronic medication on a monthly basis um, in Zimbabwe. Um, this is administered under an organization and a committee which was established in 2008 called the Zimbabwe the African Jewish Congress Zimbabwe Relief Fund. Uh, I'm the president of that. I oversee it. Sam Beneter oversees it in Harare with a very able committee, Dr. Parents are here. Williams. Dr. Williams, that's right. Uh, Philip Hassan and Irene Fox. So we have representatives from the various communities and it is very well looked after, very well administered. We not only through that assist with monthly medication but also financial assistance. Anybody that has medical requirements, operations, airlifting out of the country for a hip operation, cataracts, that all comes to us and uh, that gets dealt with. In Bulawayo we have um, uh, Hilton Solomon and Raymond Ross who uh, attend to that for us. We'll hear a little bit later about a report from Hilton. Now, Savion Lodge, well, let me just talk a little bit more about Harari. Harari today, um, as you all know, the numbers are dwindling rapidly. Um, and so what we've finally been able to achieve is that the two congregations worship together in alternate uh, synagogues. So 
So the Friday night is in one shul, and then the Shabbos morning is in the other shul. So I, when I, sorry, this isn't a sermon, so you can't talk through it while I'm talking. <laughs> You're not in shul. Yeah. <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago, I, in fact, the week, two weeks before Pesach, I traveled to Harare to do a place of distribution. Everybody, again, don't discriminate, came for matzo wine, take off, peanuts, and whatever else we could uh, secure in Johannesburg from various donors. And we had a Sunday distribution. Now, to keep harmony in the community, I stayed at the rabbi's house in Harare at Yossi Kepi, who's the uh, lay, lay reader for the congregations. So Friday night, we were we up at the Harare Shul on Shabbos morning. We davened at the, well, we, uh, we did, I didn't get there, but we were on our way to the Safari Shul. And en route, uh, as I got up to the main road, we were attacked by a swarm of bees. Uh, and from here they took out 87 stings, and from Yossi about just over 50. So clearly I wasn't meant to get to the Safari Shul. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, they, once the message got to them, they prayed for our well-being and work where I am today. Uh, the reason I tell you this is to show you that we don't discriminate Israel, Ashkenazim, whoever it is. We are here, and we are there for the community, as a united community. Sam Bennett also represents, is the president of the Zimbabwe Jewish Board of Deputies. And on that committee sits every representative from every congregation, the Harari community, the Safari community, Kampo School, Kaza, etc. And his role in that is to administer um, well, not really to listen, but to monitor any form of anti-Semitism, discrimination. And now there's this indigenization uh, draft that is going through government, and if you know about it, uh, and he's concerned that it may affect the Jewish community, and our legal team will look at that as well. Um, let me open it to the floor a little bit, two minutes. Anybody want to ask anything about Harari that you don't already know? As I said, it's difficult to talk to people that no evidence going on. Uh, okay, right. Bulawayo, uh, we have one community there, one united community. The services are now held uh, half at, Sh at Savion Lodge and half at the Sinai Hall. As you all know, the shul was destroyed in the early 2000s. Uh, Savion Lodge, and this is now an appeal. Telfed are going to put up in a few days' time a pledge form on their internet site, on their website people to donate money to either Savion Lodge or to our welfare fund. Now, I'm being quite serious. Um, we can't look at, with a skeptical eye, we've got to look at an optimistic eye and we have to understand that there are people there on a monthly basis that do rely on us and fortunately you're all here. I must say I've noticed that some of you that I knew before you made Aliyah, yeah, since you've come here, I've lost a ton of weight. So I'm getting worried what's happening here. I just find out if they're not feeding you. Uh, I'm not making Ali Ali yet. I work hard to stay like this. So I'm staying in Africa. But what I really want to appeal to you is to contribute um, to these two funds. Telford will arrange to get it to us in Zimbabwe. It is vital that just as you, when you lived in Rhodesia, contributed hugely to Israel in this time of need, now we want you to contribute to the Zimbabwe appeal. It's not, in a, it's not long term because we know the community is dwindling. There are assets of the congregations, I will admit that, but we cannot realize their, realize their worth at the moment. Things are improving, as you all know, those of you that have property, you're watching a climb of value. But now is not the time, we cannot do it. So we are really cash trapped, and this is a serious appeal. Dave Bloom will tell you all where to find the website. And uh, please um, contribute generously. <coughs> Samuel Lodge has 15 residents, can hold 40, we're down to 15. 12 are Jewish, uh, 3 are not. The non Jewish residents pay full fare and they are pretty healthy, they don't have nurse aids, etc. Uh, many of those Jewish uh, residents at Savion are totally destitute. Some of them have four nurse aides, two in the morning, two at night. Each nurse aide costs 1,800 rand. Uh, we have to pay for that. They rely on us for medication. Savion Lodge is still kept strictly kosher. We send up food, uh, kosher food from South Africa on a monthly basis. It costs a lot of money as well. 
Um, so that's that. And also the community, as I said, worship in the two alternate places. They don't have, for the first time in history, they don't have a permanent rabbi anymore. So we send somebody up for the High Holy Days, for Pesach, uh, Shavuot, just to give the community that still that feeling of, of, uh, of worship, of continuity, that they're able to uh, come together in the spirit of prayer. Um, and then I, I just want to say two more things about Zimbabwe. The first thing is that uh, when, we, sorry, when we used to distribute food, eventually because the shops didn't have stock, so when you went to the shops there weren't any empty boxes to come and collect food, is we had bags made which looked like this. African Jewish Congress, Zimbabwe Fund. And for, uh, this could be part of the raffle. This is part of history, part of Jewish relief. You may think it's a joke, but this is absolutely serious. When you see 150, 200 people coming on a Sunday afternoon for a, coll a collection point in Harare carrying these bags, Jewish people, you all know what happened to their assets, to their savings. Uh, the Right Honorable Gabriel Robert Mugabe sorted that out for them. So this is standby. We don't require the, the, the distribution of bags and food, but this is this is absolutely part of Jewish history. And anybody would like to make a donation towards getting one of them, you're most welcome. We have a few here. As Jews, we need to remember that we have a moral obligation to the wider community, as we heard from many of the speakers at our president's conference the last few days, Tikkun Olam, and Ruth Fadenbaum in Bulawayo has established something called Sogopati. Society for the uh, uh it's for the terminally ill, uh, those affected by the terminally ill. And basically, what it is, is it's for either for the children that have survived their parents who have died of AIDS, or the grandparents, the grandmothers, the mothers, I'm sorry, of those people that have died. So it's the two generations, the grandchildren and the parents, for, for the grand, grandmothers. For the grandmothers, she runs the sewing center where they make mats, scarves. That is sold internationally to raise funds. And for the kids, for the kids, we have various clubhouses for them. We support 495 kids on a monthly basis, school fees, um, school books, etc. Through connections in Australia, we've secured four pallets of books, second-hand school books, primary school books. And we're in the process of establishing a library in Bulawayo for these children. So there again, that requires assistance and uh, it receives great accolades from various uh, areas around the world because that's what we Jews do. When we're starving, we still help those around us, which is our moral obligation. Now, let's talk about Zambia for a second and then we're going to move on because there's still a few other people that want to speak. The soccer today has about 20 of the original Jews that uh, live there and then you have over a hundred Israelis that come and go in various projects, the railways, mining. Um, so we have the synagogue, which has been renovated in the, in the middle of 2005 or 2006. Services are held there every Friday night. They had a communal place of Seder this year. There were 90 people. Second night they didn't have, but first night they had. Um, Michael Galun is the president of the Council for Zambia Jewry Limited. And then you've got Simon Zuckers, the famous Simon Zuckers, and Dr. Michael Bush that run and administer the trust of the congregation, which was established from the various communities that closed down, Mufulera, Luansha, Ndola, Livingston, etc. Who's here from Zambia? Yeah. Born in Livingston. Born in Livingston. You couldn't get over the bridge in time. <laughs> yes, where are you from, sir? Luansha. Luansha. Dennis Figo of Central God. Thank you very much. Okay. okay, any questions seriously on... Uh, I can't tell you how much your houses, your properties are worth now.